a while, isn't it? Let's get into some interesting topics regarding update on the whole um, Brendan Shaw, um, Brian Callan, the fire and the kid COVID positive test, I guess, right? Positive test, positive, positive whatever it won't be. So interesting developments just regarding that whole team and what's basically going on there. It's just funny to see um, how, number one, they've reacted to it. Obviously, they haven't conducted themselves in the best way, especially Brendan. He sort of doubled down on this idea that it's not that big of a deal. If you get it, you'll be fine. And he doesn't necessarily see that the issue isn't you'll be fine, as in himself, because he's under the age of, you know, um, getting it where you'll die or anything, or he's a fit dude, whatever it may be. It's that you're going to get it and obviously spread it to people who are more um, susceptible to passing away from the virus or getting some some mad illness from it, right? So it just hasn't dealt with it in the right way. And I guess that alongside with the throwing Chris Aaliyah under the bus and just generally being, you know, L.A., very LA-ish in the way they do things makes it, this clip really funny. Um, this is a clip from Legion of Skanks where they initiate where they, I think they're doing this like mock presidential debate between the four of them: Dave Smith, uh, Louis J. Gomez, Big J, and Ari Shafir, where they essentially kind of you know, kind of doing a mock the mock election, mock presidential election, and they hooked up Ari Shafir to a lie detector and asked him a very important question that I thought was extremely fun, that elicited a very, very funny response in that respect. So we're going to put it up here on the screen and play. All right, next one. Okay, number three. Do you respect Brendan Schaub as a, com a comedian? <laughs> <laughs> Can I trade this question no, for two more not. questions? No, you cannot. You said yes, and the lie detector test determined... That was a lie. Wow! Wow! Sorry. All right, who's your friend? Which it? Okay, it's good. To, <laughs> look at it, it cuts into it. <laughs> it's just. You know, it's like. It's a weird. Mate, the more you look back at it, right? How ridiculous was that scene of them crying? Like, of that podcast? How ridiculous was it? Like, sobbing in tears as if their friend is accused of being a serial killer or something. Like, relax. Relax, guys, relax. That's why sometimes it's good to just to take a breath, take a step back, and just kind of process the information. Especially, you'd imagine you'd be a little bit more considerate with your re response when it's your friend. You should be a little bit biased. You should be a little bit um, forgiving, a bit more understanding, uh, have a bit more patience, because it's your friend, right? When you hear a story about some random person that you don't know doing something derogatory or doing something really abhorrent, of course, it's really, you're really right to be like, oh, cancel him, he's trash, he's trash. Because you don't know the person, you have no context, you're okay to do that. That's what everyone does on social media, that's what we all do in private. It is what it is, you don't have any context, you don't have a relationship with that person, you could just throw them under the bus, no one will give, it's not even throw them under the bus, you can just completely disparage them as a person and no one will bat an eyelid. But when it's your friend, you're meant to be a little bit more cautious, you're meant to be a little bit more considerate and understanding and I don't know, maybe call your friend, find out exactly what happened, speak to them face to face, um, withdraw from social, so you don't get bombarded with requests to kind of make a response and then because when you do this is what you do you start sobbing and crying here like as if your friend has lost i don't know everything in the world don't get me wrong immediately short pain short-term pain he did receive i'm sure you know the embarrassment um the shame of it uh the exposure the dropping of the agents the cancelling of the netflix show fair enough some stuff did happen but in the long term let's relax let's take it easy but the first bit anyway of, of irish fear not wanting to answer the question regarding um him not respecting brendan Schulz as a comedian is funny because obviously it speaks upon the general friction that's at play between the east coast comics and the west coast comics it feels as if most of the kind of friction comes because the the west coast comics are usually in the business of stand-up and in the east coast feel like they're in the art of stand-up right they're the kind of dudes who are essentially you know in it for the art of it they, they kind of often refer to themselves as a comedian's comedian i think of somebody like a david tells a good example right where a lot of comedians sort of sing his praises and think he's the best but the wider public don't really know that because he hasn't necessarily put himself front and center he's not necessarily around all the hollywood elites he doesn't really necessarily play that game he just does a road does stand up and keeps it moving so that's a friction that comes in it but then brendan Shaw really kind of kind of upsets the apple cart because he essentially came into stand up via um, mma uh, via a professional mix, meant, uh, a professional career in the UFC, he came into it late too, in his early thirties, and he got kind of sped through his process, kind of far, you know, into the game via his co-sign with Joe Rogan. And all these things, especially if you're a comedian, they already have their backs up when somebody gets a little um, 
advantage in the game via a kind of you know a chance meeting with an agent so imagine how they're going to feel when some ex mma fighter comes in and essentially kind of leapfrogs them which i don't think he did to be honest i still think you can operate in the business of stand-up and operate in the, in the artistry of stand-up and you still kind of coexist i, I think that's fine they're, they're both two different worlds i don't think people that are fans of brendan shaw would ever be fans of legion of scans for instance right it's completely completely com two completely different sense of uh sense of comedy right what was that what's that term sense of comedy it's two different it's two different ways of looking at stand-up i think in that regard similar to those kids on tiktok or instagram that do stand-up or do kind of their improv comedy sketches it's a completely different uh type of comedy some that you know i probably am not into but i get its appeal let's continue the video as i said to brendan i said it's like um <laughs> you know, it's it's like watching someone die or something but it isn't really is it come on relax i am also surprised oh. um, <laughs> uh yeah i don't I, yeah i don't well i mean <laughs> he's just getting started he's got a long career ahead of him he's only 40 that's so funny <laughs> <laughs> Ari's the best at these kind of moments, isn't it? Like, he has these moments where he's an absolute piece of shit, but when he needs to be, he's incredibly There's, funny. I was pretty bad for you, isn't <laughs> And he's far better than I. He's <laughs> you, you didn't even finish the sentence, Ari. You couldn't even. <laughs> <finish the laughs> not hooked up to the line. He's better than test. I. Better than I. What? Eh, you know what? He's more, whatever. He was more confident than I was at that. At that. Uh, stage and that's what's so frustrating it's i'm just sad yeah i'm sad i don't so anyway this is not gonna age well this video this is them sobbing this is just not gonna age. look at them <laughs> yeah sometimes <laughs> that's the best thing to say is to say i don't know what to say this is insane and i'm just um I i'm mad I think that's a, it's a, I'm it's mad. I'm angry. Huh? i can't talk well that's a problem. oh this is insane <laughs> You can just, you can just pray. Oh. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Because no matter what the facts are. Who's got a worse cry? Um, Brendan Shaw or Kim Kardashian? Who's got the worst one, you reckon? Oh. Whatever comes out, I'm as shocked as anyone, anyone else. I'm hurt. hurt. I'm mad. mad. I'm... Sorry, dude. He's tested faulty a lot. I'm fucking mad, man. I'm mad at him. <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I swear, even at the time when everyone was saying, I remember when it first came out in the clip, right? And I measured, trust, I'm not trying to be evil, but I remember in the comments, I was reading, I was thinking YouTube comments, everyone's like, oh my God, they're so real. Bless them. I was like, huh? This is bizarre. Why are they sobbing like this for? We haven't even got the whole story yet. It already seemed fishy from the onset. The whole Crystalia thing. Right? I was like, mm, this doesn't really seem legit. Or if it does, they're probably uh, chucking way too many allegations at him at the same time. He probably is guilty of being an absolute dirtbag. He's absolutely guilty of treating girls like absolute dog shit, for sure. But let's relax with the P word. Let's relax with that. But nah, these guys threw him under the bus, started sobbing in public just to save their own career, basically, as well. Let's not, let's not, let's not kind of sugarcoat that one that wasn't for um um crystal sake that was mostly for their own but god damn it um it's interesting i'm interested to see how it's going to play out though this kind of divide because it seems like there is a real tension especially with the fact that these guys got covid and just kind of were cavalier about it and i'm sure some of the comics on the east coast are like why are they so desperate to go out to do stand-up anyway it's not as if they're any good at it apart from maybe brian callen they probably respect as a comic but they don't respect brendan so they're probably looking at it thinking why would you be battling and fighting to go out and do stand-up when you're not even that good right it's not as if people it's not as if you're like a dave Chappelle or a chris rock i'd imagine so but you know it's unfair to say that because you know that is his vocation that is something he's dedicated for at least four years or five years of his life to and he obviously wants to pursue as a career so if he wants to go out then do the you do the stand-up and people are willing to go and pay their money and sit in a room and watch him do it fair enough but I don't know, man. I wish it could be because I think it's similar to what's happening in the DJ world where there is a bit of a split between the people that would kind of consider themselves artists or that consider themselves um, pure DJs. Right. And I don't know if that is in the term pure DJ or whatever it may be. There is the same sort of divide where some people are looking at it thinking the ones that are like dominating the business side of things, they're the ones that obviously get disproportionate, the disproportionate amount of opportunities. That probably is the issue, right? We can probably coexist, the artist and the business people, but it doesn't, it shouldn't get to a point where 
the people that occupy the business side of things are getting all the opportunities and the ones that are on the artist side of things are getting none or they're getting you know they're having to fight over the scraps that's what it, that's where it probably kind of falls by the wayside but i still think it's funny watching it from the outside seeing these guys skirt and dance around and be a bit awkward whenever brendan schultz comes around because his name comes up because unfortunately he is the i won't say pet project but he's basically joe rogan is, is effectively taking him under his wing in some way shape or form right and i remember hearing a theory that the reason why was because ultimately joe rogan sort of feels guilty about that conversation they had that legendary conversation where joe rogan sits brendan Schaub down after i think he's lost to travis brown and essentially tells him hey you're not good enough for the ufc you'll never be champion and you need to quit now because if you keep going you're going to do yourself some serious damage and he basically said hey you've got the ability and the talent to do other things outside of fighting you don't need to do this and obviously brendan does some pushback which you know which he then relays the phrase you've been surprised and in reference to like i could do more you'll be surprised which then goes to you know name his ill-fated special that came out soon after on showtime but i remember reading a theory where someone said that supposedly joe rogan felt really guilty after that talk because it kind of you know he didn't for one moment he kind of forgot the cameras were recording he found out forgot where the setting was and he kind of felt as if he just had to say in that moment but looking back he regretted doing that in public and maybe sort of like embarrassing his friend so he sort of went out of his way to make sure he opened as many doors as he could for him outside of fighting so that he could kind of you know um readdress that karma or make himself feel better i guess in that respect so whenever it comes to brendan and stand up he's always going to kind of fight for him because he obviously feels guilty for putting him in that position where he has to do stand up in the first place isn't it because he told him to quit fighting so you know if he tells him that he's shit and he's never going to get better at doing stand-up comedy then what is the point of uh retiring from the um, ufc i guess in that regard um but who knows man who knows uh, i still think again i don't find the guy funny i find his podcast really funny um i think that's okay um i also think it's okay if you're a fan of his i also think it's okay for people in new york who are you know story comics who have been in the game for 20 years to see someone like a brendan shaw see him wearing expensive trainers driving porsches and stuff and to feel a little bit jealous i think jealousy and envy are all right are all right emotions especially if they drive you to do something for yourself i think if they kind of just push you to the direction of just gossiping and disparaging someone's name that's when it gets a bit weird but if you if it pushed you to kind of do your own thing that's fine but also i think it's fine to have some envy just to look at it and think how the hell can somebody be in a game for five years and be as on the surface richer or more successful than i am it, you 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 should be asking yourself some questions you should be soul searching a little bit but you shouldn't blame him for it it's just unfortunately the nature of the game isn't it it's only normal that that the people on the west coast of 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 america people that you know make their career specifically in the hollywood industry in la who are comedy store comics would necessarily be in the business side of things and i would know how to kind of exploit it um to its fullest potential and i don't think really think that's an issue really in my opinion